In solid mechanics, if we have a mass at the end of a string like this, working as a pendulum around this pivot here, then we can look at the different kinds of energy. First off, at position one, when it's not moving, but it's subject to a force of gravity, it has potential energy that's proportional to the height it is above our datum point. So at location one, we have V equal to zero, and we have potential energy equal to M G H. If we let go of it and let it swing down here to the lowest spot it can get to on that pendulum, then when we get down here to location two, we are now down at a point where H is equal to zero, and the kinetic energy of the pendulum bob is one-half mv squared. Finally, if it runs into this spring and compresses a little bit into the spring, moving to location three, then we've taken that kinetic energy and converted it into potential energy in the spring. So we start off with potential energy because we've got elevation. We wind up with no potential energy relative to our datum, but with kinetic energy now that the bob is moving. And finally, we take that energy and we use it to compress the spring and we bring the velocity back to zero. So three different energy modes. We have the same thing in fluid mechanics. For example, if I considered a reservoir, so this is water, with a free surface open to the air and that reservoir is held back by a wall with an opening in it. Let's say the geometry looks like this and down here somewhere there's a bottom wall as well. Now because there's a hole and because there's water at a level above the level of the hole, fluid is going to come out here and it's going to be moving along this way. We know this from our empirical observations. So let's call this location two and this velocity V2. When, it come, when this chunk of fluid comes out of here, it's also at some height H below our datum surface. In this case, the surface of the water here where it meets the air. Before it got to here, this particle was back up here somewhere might have been sitting up here on the surface at location one. Along the way, it followed some path down here to get there. That's a streamline that it's following in steady flow. A streamline is the same as a path line. So by the time it got to here, it still wasn't moving very fast. We'll call that location three, but it had come down quite a distance under the water surface down below. So at location one, V1, is very close to zero. It's hardly moving, so very little kinetic energy. V3, also very close to zero, very little kinetic energy. But as it accelerates through this opening, we get out here to location two, where V2 is quite substantial, quite large. So at location one, V1 about equal to zero, so there's no kinetic energy. The potential energy is MGH, the kinetic energy is zero, and the potential energy associated with the pressure is also zero, because this is our datum point at atmospheric pressure. By the time we get to location two, it's all kinetic energy. That's this one out here. The potential energy is zero. We're now down to our height datum of zero here. The kinetic energy is M v squared over 2, and the potential energy of pressure is equal to zero. So all of that's familiar from over here, where we had a mass where it was initially not moving. It started to move, it lost potential energy and gained kinetic energy. So that's what happens as we go from location 1 to 2. At location 3, in between those two, v3 still about equal to zero. The potential energy of elevation, the one that we're used to thinking of, is now down to zero because we're at our datum point. And the kinetic energy is also equal to zero because we're hardly moving. And the potential energy of pressure is equal to the pressure times the volume of the little chunk of fluid. 
So what we wind up with is that all three of these energy states should be the same thing. MGH at location 1 plus 0 plus 0 should be equal to 0 plus MV2 squared over 2 plus 0 should be equal to 0 plus 0 plus whatever the pressure at 3 is times the volume. So each of these for the three different positions, three different modes of work. Now the volume will be the mass divided by the density, the mass of our little chunk of fluid divided by the fluid density. So MGH1, that's that one, MV2 squared over 2, that's the kinetic energy element, and P3 times V, that'll give me P3 times M over rho. So looking at each of these terms, expressing different things, potential energy of elevation, potential or kinetic energy of motion, and potential energy of pressure, we could look at them at any position along the way. We'd have to take each of the three into account because there might be a little bit of each. Here it might still be at a higher pressure but moving fairly quickly, for example. So at any location on the streamline, we should be able to write that H, so if we divide by mg, just to make things convenient here, H from this term plus dividing by mg, v squared over 2g, plus p over rho dividing by mg will give us p over rho g. That should be a constant as we go along through our streamline. We should have conservation of energy. So at any location here, at location 1 for example, these values should add up all to the same as they will at location 2. So H2 plus V2 squared over 2G plus P2 over rho G. And that should also be true at location 3 in between. H3 plus V3 squared over 2G plus P3 over rho G. Those should all be equal if energy is conserved. This is potential energy of elevation, this is kinetic energy, and this is potential energy of pressure. All three of these taken together give us Bernoulli's equation. We can write it between any two points on a streamline, and it usually is written as Z1 plus P1 over rho g plus V1 squared over 2g equal to Z2 plus P2 over rho g plus V2 squared over 2g. We've derived this here based on a heuristic argument going back to our dynamics and thinking about our concepts of the energy in a chunk of mass. We can also derive this using vector calculus directly from the Navier-Stokes equations. And a video a little further down will give you that point of view. But we'll wind up with exactly the same result.